Here I go, here I go, here I go. Yeah, here I go, here I go. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to yet another episode of The Take. I'm your host, Jackson Burleson, of course. And in today's episode, I just got done watching the Dallas Cowboys. My Dallas Cowboys. Whoopity doo. We got to win 20 to 15 by five points. The spread, by the way, was minus five and a half. So thanks to Brandon Aubrey, we didn't cover the spread against the New York Giants. <laughs> like, you're telling me right now, the Giants lose to Washington and the Vikings. Bad. And then we can barely beat the Giants. That concerns me. From what I have seen from Daniel Jones in the first two games, but he did play well tonight. I will say that. He was 29 of 39 passing, 281 yards. I mean, that's a good game, in my opinion. Malik Neighbors, bro, I mean, this Cowboys secondary couldn't even touch him. Literally, we couldn't touch him. He had 12 catches for 115 yards. He was cooking our corners. Cooking. Like, it was so bad. And our, and our corner is so bad that I can't even think of his name. He went to Clemson. He played for the Vikings last year. His last name is Booth. I'm like spacing on his first name right now. But that's how bad he was. He was first route of the game. First catch of the game to, for Malik Neighbors was a wide open. It was wide open. It reminded me of the Packers game again, dude. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Our defense? I get it. We did good against the run tonight. I mean, we only allowed 26 yards rushing. In the last two games, we've allowed over 420. So, basically, if you're comparing two weeks to one, like, what, what is there to be impressed about? Our offense was, it was mid. Outside of that CeeDee Lamb touchdown, what else did this offense have that was explosive? This Giants offense compared to the Dallas Cowboys offense tonight, was better. The Giants were more explosive, even with the running back. I mean, Devin Singletary didn't rush for a crazy amount. He didn't even rush for 40 yards. But he still had his moments where he had explosive plays. Daniel Jones was able to have time in the pocket. Our pass rush wasn't doing anything. I mean, Micah... Parsons, which he got injured. He has an ankle injury. Luckily, we have 10 days off or we'd be absolutely screwed. But Micah Parsons, it was it was just one matchup against this one tackle on the Giants. They were breaking it down on the next-gen stats. It was like 14 like uh, matchups, one pressure. One pressure. And there was multiple times with Micah Parsons where I was just like, where is, what is he doing? There were a couple RPO read option plays where he kind of just stood there, wasn't really sure what to do, didn't make a play. It was in no man's land. I'm like, is he still trying to figure it out? Or is he, like, I feel like he could have went after the running back or went after Daniel Jones on a couple of those plays. But the Giants had a good game plan for him. And I'm surprised it didn't get him the win because Parsons was getting pushed by these offensive linemen going farther than the edge. I've been thinking about this since the loss against the Cardinals last year where Parsons was shut down because the linemen on the edge push Parsons out because he is smaller, so he has to rely on his speed, and he wasn't able to do that as much. It's easier to brick wall him because he's not that big. I feel like for one of the best players in football, People are starting to figure out how to stop Micah Parsons, how to eliminate him, how to get him off the field, on the sideline. I mean, that is just something I never thought would be a consistent thing. And it happened against the Ravens as well. And the Cowboys thought that I was going to completely forget about that game and come on here and go, well, we got to win against the Giants. I really don't care. Honestly, 20 
to 15 against the Giants feels like a loss. It feels like a loss because our next couple of games, first of all, at Pittsburgh Sunday night football against an elite pass rush and an elite secondary. So I think we lose that game. The Lions, I think the Cowboys lose that game. Another good pass rush and another good secondary. Then the Niners, forget it. That's a loss. Falcons, that's a loss. Good secondary, decent pass rush. I mean, they have Matthew Judon, but... And then the Eagles. The Eagles, those are our next five games. Does anybody see us winning those next five games? Because I don't. Maybe Atlanta, if they sell. Maybe Pittsburgh, if Justin Fields doesn't play well. But I mean... If Daniel Jones is able to get time in the pocket, then what's going to happen with all these other players? What's going to happen with all these other quarterbacks? They're going to play well. They're going to play well. And CeeDee Lamb, he had an interview uh, post-game. I'll, uh, I'll play it for you right now. In better graces because we ended up with a dub, got a longer, a mini bye week coming up, um, got a lot of time to rest my body and um, got a little more involved. Just stand true to who I am. Uh, obviously, my coaches and my guys are believing in me. Uh, they're doing their 111, I'm doing mine, and that's to be as motivational and make plays for the guys. So, CD Lamb basically said, Well, I, I got more involved or, or whatever in the game plan which is true, but barely. Because this game, CeeDee Lamb had eight targets. Last week against the Ravens, he had seven. No rushes. Tonight, he had a few rushes. So there wasn't really a difference in the game plan. I mean, last week, he had 67 yards receiving, four catches. Tonight, he had 98 yards. I mean, he had one explosive play, but... I don't know, outside of CeeDee Lamb and Jake Ferguson, who on this Cowboys offense is going to step up? Zeke Elliott, by the way, got demoted from first string. That's how bad he is. I mean, he is officially washed. And then we have Dalvin Cook somewhere in our running back room. I haven't seen him all season. I haven't seen him. Deuce Vaughn, he comes in. He, I like his energy. I like his heart. And our fullback, who uses fullbacks nowadays? I mean, Kurt Herbstreit was talking about this guy and being a tight end in college. So, like, the fact that we're using a fullback is amazing. But to be fair, our wide receivers, we need somebody to step up on our wide receivers. Jalen Tolbert, somebody needs to step up. Brandon Cooks. I mean, he makes an impact sometimes, but he's very inconsistent. So I want to see Brandon Cook step up. That's the guy I want to see step up when we get off this 10-day break and we get Sunday night football at Pittsburgh. We have time to get healthy. Zach Martin was dealing with an eye issue, and then Micah Parsons, he went to the locker room. Trayvon Diggs had a cramp, but I'm not really worried about that. We're missing Deron Bland right now. We are really missing Deron Bland. I will say that. Our corners are getting exposed. We're getting thin in the cornerback position. And we need to figure out a way to respond to that. We need to figure out a way to respond to that. And I, I just can't believe that the Giants hung with us for so long. I mean, that's the thing that blows my mind the most and Stephen A. Smith, he said, if the Cowboys don't beat the Giants, we are trash. But does this game define the Cowboys as trash still? Because they only beat the Giants by five points. So does that really dismiss us being trash? I don't think so. There's a lot of question marks on this football team. And our rushing defense was fine. Tonight. But against good quality opponents, will it be? I don't think so. I don't think so. This win 
was good for us to get our confidence back. We're 500. Could be worse. Could be worse. That's the way I'm looking at it, but I'm not impressed. Let's move on to JB's Pits. <laughs> Courtesy of Hard Rock Bets. The only betting app you can actually use in the state of Florida. You can use player props, spreads, money lines. You can put any kind of bet you want on NFL, NBA, soccer, baseball. The postseason for baseball is coming up. We will be having a podcast before the postseason. We're, we're trying to figure out that timing with the Mets and uh, Braves game on Monday. But um, my pick of the week is the Bills plus 115 versus the Baltimore Ravens on Sunday night football. Josh Allen has a record of one and two versus Lamar Jackson, including the postseason. Lamar Jackson's two and one. But I've really been impressed with the Bills these first three weeks. I mean, they just absolutely mollywopped the Jacksonville Jaguars on Monday Night Football. And they're third in the NFL in takeaways with six. They're tied in the NFL. They're tied for eighth in the NFL and total yards allowed at 286 with the Bears defense. They're tied with the Bears defense, who's actually been a really good defense. So the Bills have impressed me. And Von Miller looks like he's Von Miller again. He looks like he's that MVP, Super Bowl MVP caliber player. He looks like he's showing flashes of what he can do again. So I really like the Bills in this matchup. The Ravens have had the number one offense and yards to start the season, but the Bills have had the number one scoring offense in the league these first three games. They're averaging 37 points a game. So that's really, really good. So I will take this Bills offense. They've been really starting to figure it out. James Cook and Josh Allen, that is a dynamic running game. But also, so is Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson. So this is going to be a really good matchup. And I think it's going to be a close game. I do. I think it'll be one possession. But I will rather have Josh Allen, who is my MVP, three weeks into the season. He is my MVP. He's been playing fantastic football. No interceptions, seven touchdowns. That's what you want to see. You want to see Josh Allen making good throws, not being risky, reading the field. That's what you want. And it took a while for him to really understand that, but he's, it feels like he's really understanding that. He's got good receivers. I mean, Clear Shakur is there. They also got Keon Coleman, who I really do like out of Florida State. He gives me shades of a Stephon Diggs type player. I feel like he could be that good. I like his speed. His route tree is really, really good. That's a huge piece. And I also like the two tight ends, Knox and Kincaid. I mean, I like those two guys for the Buffalo Bills. So give me the Buffalo Bills in that game. I also want to point out one more thing. Josh Allen has the number one QBR in the NFL at 92.6, which is ahead of Derek Carr at 81.1. So I like the Bills. They're, they're starting off 3-0 and for the first time since 2021. This is the third time they've done this since Sean McDermott took over in 2017 as the head coach. So I've got confidence in the Buffalo Bills, plus 115, do what you want with that. That's who I'm picking for Sunday Night Football this week. Let's move on to another topic. Which team has more concerns? The Jacksonville Jaguars or the Cincinnati Bengals? Now, both of these teams are 0-3. But I'm going to go the Jacksonville Jaguars. They haven't scored 20 points once this year in the first three games. They got absolutely blown out in Buffalo by 37. Trevor Lawrence looks like a shadow of himself. He's lost eight straight starts, including last year. And they've been blowing leads. It's the way Jacksonville is losing these games to me. They had a 17-3 lead against the Dolphins week one. They had a 14-0 lead against the Browns week two. 
And then in the Bills, they couldn't really get any sort of rhythm. But let's hear from Trevor Lawrence here. He did not have the greatest game. I will. He, he even admits that. He even admits it. He didn't have the greatest game. And they're paying him $55 million a year. So you can't bench the man. Mac Jones came in and had a fumble. But Jacksonville has mistakes they need to clean up. At some point, you got to go do it, you know, in the game. And we haven't been able to do that yet. So uh, don't have a great answer for you right now. I think, you know, obviously watching the tape is going to help. And, you know, we got to fix the mistakes that are showing up. And um, there's plenty of them to pass around to everybody. So, you know, we're, we're the ones that got to make the corrections. And at the end of the day, when we step on that field, we got to make the plays. And I think that's what we're lacking right now is we're not just not making the plays. Um, we're in positions to do it and not doing it. So Lawrence completed 55% of his passes in that game. He was sacked four times. He had a 19 quarterback rating. That is horrendous. Horrendous. For a Jacksonville team who is supposed to take massive leaps this year. Massive. And they just haven't looked like a team that is going to be good. And I, and I, I feel like they have the talent. They do have the talent. And in week one, I was, I was watching the Dolphins-Jags game. I was like, the Jags look really, really good to start this game. They look like a team that can be a force to reckon with. And then they go 0-3. And that's a big disappointment. Because Trevor Lawrence came out of Clemson, was drafted number one overall, and was being compared to Peyton Manning. I mean, that's the ceiling that this guy has. He can be that good. He's won a playoff game. He's had experience. He needs to take this team by the reins and guide them. And, and I was breaking down some of Trevor Lawrence's film earlier today, and I was noticing he had, there was a play that he had, I think it was on the DeMar Hamlin interception, that he was like kind of leaning forward on the throw, and he had a clean pocket. I saw Darren Orlovsky dissect that play, and I was just like, why is he, why is he leaning that much? I mean, he has time. He's getting protection. It's not like he's not getting protection. He has the weapons. He has the running back. I mean, I, there's no excuses for the Jacksonville Jaguars. None. None. And maybe if Trevor Lawrence goes 0-7, bench him. But can you? I mean, he's $55 million. I mean, this guy's expensive. You invest, The Jacksonville Jaguars have invested so much money in this guy. You can't just throw him to the bench. I mean, the Lions started 1-8. Two years ago and almost made a playoff push. So, I mean, you could be patient for seven games, but if he's not producing, what do you do? I mean, the last time they started 0-3, Urban Meyer was the head coach and he got fired the same season. So, do you fire Doug Peterson, who has won a Super Bowl? Do you put Mac Jones in? I mean, there's a lot of questions in Jacksonville. A lot. Which 3-0 team stays undefeated the longest? The Vikings, Chiefs, Steelers, Bills, or Seahawks? Those are the only five undefeated teams remaining through three games of the season. And I'm going to go Chiefs. And I know they haven't looked perfect, but every game they've won has been by one possession. They have shown me, even with Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey not being a good duo to start the year. They'll figure it out. They played a lot of football together. But the thing is, I trust this team to figure out a way to win, whether it's pretty or not. That's what it comes down to. And their next four games are pretty friendly, in my opinion. They play at the Chargers versus the Saints, at 49ers, that's a tough game, but Niners have had a, a tough start. They're one and two. 
at the Raiders. That's a good pass rush, good defense, but they just got absolutely annihilated against the Panthers. Andy Dalton threw 300 yards on them. So I'm not scared of the Kansas City Chiefs losing any games anytime soon. And then after the Raiders, they play the Bucks, Broncos, Bills, and Panthers. Those four games I just mentioned, they maybe lose to the Bills, but they mean, I mean, they beat the Bills a lot. Maybe the Bills can beat them during the regular season, but I mean, those are three, three wins right there. So I think they could stay undefeated until the Bills game. And that's six more games. So I think they could, I think they could go six and oh going into that Buffalo Bills game. I think they could, which would put them at nine and oh. So, I'll say this. I mean, Mahomes, he hasn't looked perfect, but he's still the best player in the league. Four interceptions, which against the Falcons is crazy. I didn't even know this. Justin Simmons, who the Falcons just picked up uh, to put in their their safety duo with uh, Jesse Bates. Justin Simmons has six interceptions on Patrick Mahomes. And he was on the Broncos, so that makes sense. But that's crazy that he's got his number like that. He's got his number like that. And even without Pacheco, without Isaiah Pacheco, the Chiefs still found a way to run the football with Carson Steele, who's an undrafted rookie at a UCLA. They just signed Kareem Hunt. We'll see if he gets elevated from the practice squad this week. But, I mean, the Chiefs figure out a way to win every single week. Even in the Bengals game, they had a pass interference that gave them the win, basically, and they figured it out. I mean, they always win these tight games. That's why they go to the Super Bowl every year. So I'm taking the Chiefs. That's the team that's going to stay undefeated the longest. Now let's get into today's play of the week. We've got action packed play of the week here. This is, there's a lot to dissect on this play of the week, but I'm just going to go ahead and play it for you guys right now. Oh, I got 10 guys on the field. Third down and seven. This one is launched from McLaurin. He's got it. Touchdown. Touchdown, Terry McLaurin. They needed seven. They got 27, and here's the end of it. Right foot, knee down, and the catch. I mean, in Jane Jane Daniels is something special. One, he threw... 91.3% completion percentage. That was his completion. 21 of 23 passing. That 91.3% was his completion percentage. That is a NFL record by a rookie. That is nuts. Nuts. And Terry McLaurin, I'll give him his flowers as well. He had four catches, 100 yards, and a touchdown. And the Commanders play the Cardinals this Sunday. That's a, that's, a, that's a good game, actually. I like that game. I'll be circling now. I'll be tuned in for that. But what does Jaden Daniels' performance mean versus the Bengals? He's a really cool customer, and he's got, uh, like, real poise about him. I thought going in, we knew the importance of the ball and, uh, you know, the decision-making for that. We just couldn't give them short fields and chances to go. So his ability to know when to, when not to, when to make a play with his legs, I thought um, we've seen a lot of this at practice, and now it's carrying over into the games where the decision-making, sliding, going, taking your shot. Uh, But I thought it was a really strong performance tonight by him. For starters, I think it means Jaden Daniels will be an MVP candidate this season. I think he'll have a better season than C.J. Stroud. And that says a lot coming from me because I said Caleb Williams was going to be rookie of the year. They were going to win the division, whatever. That hasn't looked like it's going to happen yet. It's one. It's early. It's three games. It's hard to really tell who's good and who's not, but I mean, I'm really impressed with Jaden Daniels. The way he's sitting in the pocket, reading defenses, has a crazy arm and crazy deep ball accuracy. I mean, that's what I'm looking at with Jaden Daniels. And he's had pressure on him. I mean, it was his first primetime game. You know, Heisman Trophy winner last season. 
and he hasn't faded away. And what's crazy is Dan Orlovsky, which he just made hot takes, make hot takes on this one, but he said that, hot take here, the commanders will win the NFC North. That was his hot take, and it actually might happen. It could. There's a world where the commanders could win the division, I think. I mean, they're that good of a team. They have Eckler, Brian Robinson, okay, Terry McLaurin. I love all the weapons they have. I mean, this is a good team, and they have a good defense. I mean, this roster is nothing to mess around with. And, like, I just think for Jaden Daniels, I mean, this guy is so motivated. I mean, when he transferred from Arizona State in college, all of his teammates were saying he sucked anyways. He goes to LSU, balls out, second overall pick. I mean, what else do you want from this guy? I mean, seriously, what else do you want from this guy? He has put in the work. I mean, at the end of that game, they went on a seven and a half minute drive. Seven and a half minute drive. And that play I just showed you, there was a 10.3% chance of that even happening, according to Next Gen Stats. That, <laughs> I mean, Jade Daniels, the commanders scored every possession in that game. Every possession. It's also. The first game since 1940, the Bengals versus the Commanders that Monday night, to have no turnovers and no punts. And that's why I said earlier that the Jaguars are more of a concerning 0-3 team than the Bengals because the Bengals had some sort of offensive rhythm against the Commanders. They had something. At least they had something to show for it. Something. Something. But there, th- this is, first three weeks, I mean, it's always hard to gauge who's really good and who's not. I mean, the Vikings are 3-0. and The Seahawks are 3-0. and Seahawks haven't really had that tough of a schedule. I mean, they have a good team on paper, but it's just, it's just hard right now. The only team I can really say that's good is the Chiefs. I mean, I know they're going to be good. I know they are. I mean, the Vikings blew out the Texans. So that that was like, whoa. That was complete left field. Complete left field. But I appreciate you guys tuning into today's episode of The Take. I'm your host, Jackson Burleson. If you guys want more episodes like this, hit the subscribe button. Also hit the notification bell. Like, comment, and also share with anybody who may be interested in the NFL or just sports in general. I post a lot. We're going to be trying to put out World Series predictions uh, this week. So make sure to keep a lookout for that. But I'm your host, Jackson Burleson, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care. I'm from another world, baby, yeah. Right away paradise. They think I'm way too cold, cause I put my